I got I wanted that. <laughs> you want that. that? That's the start of the video. <laughs> That's, That's it. We no just started. Intro. It happened. No intro. <laughs> That. Hey guys, super special video for you here today. Me and Ben have talked about making a video together for years at this point. Finally got to actually do it, so big shout out and thank you to him. Uh, if you guys would, please hit the subscribe button for my channel and for Ben's. I'll link his down below. Ben just has one of the best educational channels here on YouTube, so make sure you check all that out. Thanks to Sweetwater for having us. And uh, Ben's gonna help me fix my picking. I have, I've always had an issue descending when I'm picking. What was cool about this lesson is that everyone in the room, there were four or five people in the room with us, everyone, as we're going through this lesson, you could see them, they're looking at their hand, they're like evaluating their picking too. So I hope this video helps you. It's been helping me a bunch. I've been doing this burst style picking that Ben talks about here. And uh, kind of a long video, but uh, there's a lot of good stuff in here. And uh, like I said, subscribe to both channels if you would. And uh, let's get you back to the video. I don't know, how do I get you off of the, off of the tripod and back into the video? You want the keys to the Ferrari, sir. Yeah, I, I want that. So I wouldn't say that I own the Ferrari, I lease it. I lease it. Yeah, I get it on the weekends and stuff. That's about it, I think. One of my, if not favorite teacher on the internet, we've talked about doing a video for- Many times. Many, many times. Many times. And uh, last year I didn't get to, I had yeah. to leave early. Yeah, I had a little emergency at home and stuff, I had yeah. to get on out, yeah. Yeah, and Ben was nice enough. I'm like, can you fix my picking? I'm gonna try my darndest. And he said, yes. He can. He, I'll see what I can do. Yeah. I'll see what I can do, man. So, like I said, I, I love your picking. Thank you like, so I, much, man. I think that being able to pick both directions, and you, yeah. you've evaluated a lot of, you know, different, the picking slant and all yeah, that stuff, which I never yeah. have, so I just want to be really lazy. Man, He's I went done down all the work. that Troy Grady rabbit hole so yeah. hardcore years ago. And I remember watching the, the Cracking the Code series here on YouTube, which is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Everybody should watch oh, it. Oh, yeah. It's almost like a, a, a documentary about picking and the struggles how to, how to that pick. we all have with it, yeah. And, and Troy's picking is oh, out of this world. Insane, yeah. utterly bonkers, man. But I remember watching that stuff and being like, that can't be true, yeah. that's not true, no way. And then like I sat down and I was like, oh no, it's all true. Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> yeah, everything. So I'm, I'm curious, like I said, about mine, because the issue, and I've heard people relate to this too when I talk about it, is I can ascend. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I can play through a scale, three note per string, ascending, Maybe not well, but like I'm stronger at ascending. Like I can go through Taking it. Taking it up, yeah. Yeah, and then on my descent, it's just like my hand just forgets how to how to play guitar. Okay, yeah. Yeah. But it's so, only on the descending stuff. The ascending I'll, stuff is pretty comfy. Yeah. So I always and we were talking about this a little bit before we started rolling. I default to pattern based when I descend. Yeah. You know, it usually fours. Yeah. Which, which is honestly very challenging to play. Descending fours is tough. But, and it's that Eric Johnson-y kind of like, I double down everything. Yeah? okay, but, yeah. But again, that probably is leaning more into the ascending side, because I'm slanting my pick like this the whole, okay, yeah. the whole time. So that's the interesting thing about it too. Um, and it, it's funny, we all have like our own things about our playing that we like. We also all know our particular limitations. Right. But everybody, everybody else just hears the cool stuff, you know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? The edited stuff. The edited stuff, <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I'm also, um, I'm gonna say a downward pick slanting type player mm -hmm. like 95% of the time. Yeah. And that's something that really surprised me whenever I got into the Cracking the Code stuff is all the things that he talked about, like the Ingve isms the Eric Johnson-isms, um, where, where it was just like him reading my mind about how I play too. You right. Know? I've always had that kind of downward pick slanting kind of angle. Okay. And I honestly accredit some of that to, there's this guy in um, my first band, his name's Mitch. He's one of the most phenomenally creative players I've really? ever played with ever. Oh, but his cool. picking hand, dude, makes no, no sense. sense. No, and he wrote a lot of those like double pick oh. riffs like that, you know? You know, all of those kind of patterns are all having you escape on upstrokes. Yeah. So it's almost like just to play Mitch's riffs, I think I kind of developed, developed your some of that style. Picking. So in, oh. in case someone hasn't seen it, what by downward pick slanting, which yeah, yeah, we yeah. both do, but. Mm -hmm. Yeah, kind of the quickest way to look at it in a nutshell here is, you know, if these are the strings of a guitar and your pick is entirely flat like this, mm -hmm. well, anytime you're trying to change strings, it's trapped in between the strings. So right. I have to kind of do this extra motion to get up and over the string, no matter what direction you're coming from. This right. is what slows a lot of people down. Or they develop these very curvy pick strokes like this. Right. 
Uh, the downward pick slanting thing, my trajectory isn't up and down like this. It's actually in and out like this. Oh, that's following interesting. Following this kind of plane. Now, this is also the same way Zach Wilde, Joe Bonamassa, tons of other players play. And you'll notice what happens there is the, the downstroke is trapped in between the strings. But I can change strings great after an upstroke oh. because my pick is getting air time. Oh. Do you do it the same way ascending and descending? Absolutely so. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. I wonder yeah. if I'm not. Maybe I ascend one way. It might be and that kind of the thing. Other. Yeah. A lot of players do that kind of thing subconsciously, and they're not even really mm -hmm. aware of it. You know. Yeah. Um, and I see people getting that impression sometimes. They'll, they'll watch through some of the cracking the code stuff, and they think that one pick slant is for ascending, another pick slant is for descending, and it's like it doesn't really have to do with that. It's all about That's what great. is the pick stroke that it terminates on. Yeah. And that's going to determine: Am I changing strings after an upstroke? Am I changing strings after a downstroke? Yeah. You know? So that's what really determines all of it. So I have limitations for sure in mm -hmm. my own picking as well. I struggle with stuff that changes strings after downstrokes. Okay. Unless it's going to another downstroke. In right. Style. Do you like do you like double down? Yeah, yeah. Okay. All of that stuff, all that. Yeah. Those kinds of ideas. Like that sounds kind of like the sequenced fours thing that you were doing, only the difference is I'm entirely playing to my strengths and ignoring the stuff that I suck at. <laughs> right, well, I, that's why I default to that stuff, because I'm like, I can't figure, like that's like as fast as I can go yeah. descending. And I don't know what, it, and it's like I physically can't make my hand pick faster descending. It's really weird. I got a couple things that might help. Can, okay. Do you mind just like showing me some examples of how some of that stuff sounds and feels when you play it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Hot swap. So, hot swap. <laughs> So, um, full disclosure, it's gonna sound really bad right now. So, do it. I hope it do does, it. Okay. man. Okay. Well, what should I sit so you can see my hand the best? Can you kind of give me the down the barrel like, like that this? right there? Yeah, okay. that's great. It's beautiful. So, like, uh, like up to speed or just kind of like just whatever you feel comfortable okay. with. Yeah. So, like us and you, it'd be something like that. Okay, I can see some good downward pick slant kind of action going on right and here. And then, yeah. so I can, if I double, I can descend. Yeah. Okay, and I, do you know why that is? No. Because it's terminating on an upstroke. Oh, okay. Oh, wait, so. Because you go one, two, three, four, five, six, you're changing strings after an upstroke. Okay, so when I'm doing the um, normal threes, because it, it's alternate picking, so yeah. it changes every single time. It, yes. That must be what's throwing me. It is really difficult. Because yeah. if I did it without it, and like I said, it's gonna sound bad. Good. Like, it, yeah. it's like painfully, I'm like, no. It's never, interesting, no. yeah, it, actually your picking hand does look quite a lot different when you're just playing straight down like that. Do it does again it? for me, do it again, it's interesting. Yeah, or, like, oh, just, it totally like, does, like, yeah. Like, like loop it, just Sure. Yeah, interesting. You've got like a lot more thumb wag when you descend. Really? Yeah, like going up, everything was pretty straight with the thumb, as soon as you start going down, this mechanism kicks in. Really? Yeah. And I recognize this because this is something I struggled with for a really long time. Okay. Like I remember the first time I was playing with um, one of the first really advanced guitar players that I knew, Eric Reason, who's an amazing player. And he's like, man, I don't know how you play with your thumb doing all that stuff. I yeah. was like, doing what stuff? And he's like, you know, all this. Rip. Like, what are you talking about? It like shattered my entire mind. I've I never, like, I didn't okay. know I was doing it, you know? So show me, a, well, yeah, what, what's, like, what's a, a lick that we like we could learn that would maybe focus, is it just like a, a mental thing? Like be aware that don't move your thumb. Kind of, sort of. So there's okay. a little bit of this stuff where, and, and you know, it's like for every bad habit, there's somebody out there that absolutely smokes it. Right. Like have you ever watched like Buzz McGrath from Unearth Play? Uh -uh. His picking is all thumb oriented and it's blistering. I've dude. seen people like just like shred like yeah. insane and they're just it's all thumb. Yeah. You know, I, yeah. I've seen guys like that, but for myself, as far as that thumb thing kind of goes, what I generally try to avoid is bending at this knuckle. Okay. This knuckle right here. Because what I tend to do a lot of times whenever this motion comes back in my playing, because I wrestle with it for so long. Mm -hmm. If you think about it, the entire geometry of how the, the tip of the pick is addressing the string gets really complicated when your wrist is going up and down and the tip of the pick is creating this smiley face kind of shape right. by this rocking motion. That going up and down against a straight line that is a string is bound to create problems. Problems. You know what I mean? You probably get like a bounce. Yeah. yeah. Like I've noticed a lot of the guys that get away with the thumb stuff, even Ingve does some of the thumb stuff. Mm -hmm. It's all coming from like 
the drumstick down here. Oh, it's so this the, kind of contraction. So not so much the joint. Yeah, not the joint, it's, but the bass. Yeah. Yeah, it's more of that kind of thing. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, and you can generate, you can feel quite a lot of force coming from that. I never got good at this, but the players yeah. that do the thumb thing, it's generally from here, not from here. It is, that, it'd be interesting for people to try that. Cause right? It, it's, it's hard, I, my, I instantly want to go joint. Right, yep. yeah. It's really so. weird. So one thing that I think kind of comes with kind of understanding our identity as, as downward pick slanters. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's this entire downward thing where you gotta like learn how to trust the process, trust mm -hmm. the technique, you know? Yeah. And so one thing that I, I've told a lot of my students to do is these like, I call them like trust fall kind of exercises, okay. right? It's like a trust fall where you just got to yeah. hope and believe that it's going it, to it, work. It, trust it, the process. It'll work. Yeah, exactly. So like for example with your sixes thing that you were doing a second ago, mm -hmm. Like you were descending with sixes, and if you're doing that with that strong downward pick slanting approach, like how you descend, then this process will work. You just kind of have to learn to trust fall into it a little bit. Okay. So like one thing that, that you can do to kind of get used to this and understanding that this will work if I just trust it. So play that sequence of six on a string, right? Like I'll do like, um, I'll just do like A, B, C, you're on okay. G string. So if you play that walking down twice. Yeah, like that, good. So what you wanna watch for is like after you pick that very last note, mm -hmm. that very last A note off that upstroke, I want you to freeze frame, just like freeze after you pick that last note. Let me kinda okay. look down the barrel again right sure. here. So you're saying? Yeah, and just totally freeze, right? Okay. Now what I want you to try to shoot for is making sure that when you freeze frame that the pick is in the air. It's got air time. Okay. It's out and about and above the string that you're going to be going to next. Okay. Like this right here, just go. Oh, okay, okay. See, I'm out. Yeah. Okay. But it's not even that I'm like scooping. Yeah, I, I, I kind of over-exaggerate, yeah. yeah. Like I want you to really think about carving those hard angles like this. Okay. The problem that a lot of people have is their picking is, is curving a lot. That's what I'm doing. But dude, think yeah. about trying to make the hardest angles like this. Like you have a ruler guiding your pick. Yeah. Coming out of the strings like this. Like imagine my hand is like a ramp, the pick is traveling up and down. Right. That's kind of the trajectory that I'm kind of following. So yeah. it's like straight. Straight. Up. It's more like an angle like this right here. Oh, okay. You know? Yeah. yeah. So now you're getting some of that air time out of the strings, right? Yeah, yeah, okay. So if it looks like this, where the pick is really in between the strings, yeah. that's not gonna do it. That's what I'm doing. Yeah, that's gonna be really that's hard to change strings because you're okay. trapped in the middle of the strings. Okay. You know? Now you could do that if you were, say, using an up to up. But okay. that's not really what we're talking about. No, no, you no. You know what I mean? So uh, you gotta learn to trust that process just by freeze frame and trying to get that air time. Now, what I'm doing here, you might notice, because I'm trying to think of this as a lick that might go. Something like that, right. right? So what I'm trying to do here is after I play that last note, I'm trying to get the tip of the pick right above the D string. See where it's at? I see. It's like right above that D. So that way I can just crash it. down on it. Yeah, yeah, it's like yeah. I'm crashing into okay. it. You know? And this little phrase, this is what'll really, really help. That. So you're doing that trust fall, knowing that that upstroke will put you out of the string so you can just crash back down into the D string. Yeah. So, okay, I see. Yeah, because I, I, I'm fighting wanting to go almost like where I would hit the string. Yeah, totally. You have to get out of the way. Okay. You gotta get out of the way of it, exactly. Like, one example I can put uh, about this stuff that I think is a perfect example of like the trust fall of this entire thing. Mm -hmm. You know, Zach Wilde is a monster downward pick slanting player. All right. of his stuff revolves around this upstroke escape to get out of the strings. And when Zach is playing those like furious pentatonic lines, dude, his picking motion is gigantic. It's crazy it's to watch him. huge. Like yeah. it looks like he should be hitting all the strings for sure. Yeah. But the thing is, like, if you're looking down the barrel like that at his picking, you'd notice that it's really in and out, super hard in and out strokes like this right here. Yeah. So think about it this way. If I'm trying to get from this string to here, on right. this string right here, right? It's almost like the more blatantly in and out the picking is, the safer it is. Because yeah. when I do an upstroke that looks like this, there's a good chance I'm gonna hit those other strings by accident right. and make a bunch of noise. It's definitely what's happening. When but I... when the pick is going in and out like this, try to get a better angle down here, like this kind of angle, there's zero chance I'm gonna hit the wrong string. Yeah. There's zero. Okay. 
So that, like, it's that trusting the process kind of thing is really what this is all about. It's all it's more psychological than anything. It, well, it's already making me like I'm I'm when I'm doing it I'm thinking about it. Yeah. In a whole different. Like, yeah. Okay. Yeah. See, already I'm seeing your your thumb is not like wigging out as much as it was I'm, I'm, earlier. I'm like so aware of it now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, like, right. Hypersensitive. Like don't move. Dumb. Yeah. Yeah. I think that wiggle is probably the biggest thing. It's kind of slowing yeah. you down on some of that stuff. Because I say us any. Yeah. Tight. Yeah. Tight. I see I'm not doing it. I'm kind of exaggerating. About Good, it. you should yeah. exaggerate it. Yeah. So here's the thing about this stuff. A lot of times when people are learning these techniques, they try to shrink them down to like, you know, invisible Paul Gilbert size right away, right? Right, like Rick Graham or, you know, Oh like, my God, uh, yeah. yeah, impossible players, right? Yeah. Here's the thing though, like if you were trying to learn how to be a karate master, right? <laughs> yes. And it's your first day in the dojo and somebody throws a punch at your head, you're gonna jump sideways five feet to get out of the way of it, right? Right. Because you're just trying to instinctively avoid getting hit. Right. After a few months, maybe that turns to you just sidestepping. Maybe yeah. after a few months, that turns to you just moving your head this much so it just barely breezes by you. It's a good enough. Exaggerating the technique is a great way to learn to trust the technique. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm avoiding the punch. I'm avoiding the other string by making these motions huge at first. Yeah. If you learn to trust it, it'll shrink. But I remember practicing. Okay. And that became its own little unit of like guitar information. Yeah. Think about like a gallop. Yeah. That's like one motion, right? Yeah. But, uh, but maybe to a beginner, it's three different motions. Down it down, down it right. down, down it down, you know? Uh, but by practicing this little burst, yeah, that's so. I've never. It's amazing what it does to you. Yeah, seriously, I've never amazing. done it. Like, yeah, that, oh, that's dude. funny. Well, thank you, buddy. No, dude, I'm happy to help, and I hope that that stuff does help. But seriously, the speed burst thing, get into it. Yeah. Do that stuff. It'll Absolutely. Blow your mind with what it will do for free playing. No, Stumbling. that's cool. Stumbling. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I'll have all your links down below. Lovely. And uh, Uncle Ben, best guitar teacher on the interwebs. Disagree. Hard disagree. disagree. No, wait, hold on. Oh, we knew we it. We did that, though. We knew it. We do have that. We had that. And good hair. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's nice. All right, see you guys. Cheers.